Hey guys, this is Sergey, and today I want to show you my most favorite Visual Studio feature. It's called Parallel Stacks. Every time myself or my team is facing some threading issues like live log or deadlock or some strange behavior in a sync await code, I heavily rely on it. It's just amazing. I want to show you a few examples. And as the first one, let's debug a deadlock in async code. We have a custom single thread synchronization context with a dedicated thread, which is very similar to a synchronization context available in Windows Forms or WPF. We create the synchronization context, set it, and then we use test.yield to make sure that process data method is called within the synchronization context by the dedicated thread. And that method just calls the do work async and blocks the results. If everything is okay, we should be able to hit this breakpoint. We can pause the execution because we never hit that breakpoint. And now we can look at parallel stacks. Parallel stacks has two views, the threads and the tasks. Both views groups elements together. So if you have multiple threads, multiple tasks that are doing the same thing, they will be grouped in one box. Now let's try to investigate the deadlock. We can see that process data calls do work async and that execution is happening from a dedicated thread. But for some reason, we cannot get the result and move forward. So now let's switch to a tasks view. We can just click here and we can see that we're running do work async. And the problem here is that we cannot run the continuation of this task delay because it needs to be queued to the synchronization context. But a single thread from the synchronization context is actually blocked waiting for this async operation to finish. And it's a classical deadlock. We can switch to threads view, we can go to the synchronization context that we have, and we can even inspect our work queue. So as a reminder, our work queue contains a work items that needs to be processed by the synchronization context. And we can see that indeed we have one element, and we have a classical deadlock. Right now this thread that processes the callback is executing process data, and it waits for this async operation to finish, and for this operation to finish, and you need to have a thread available to finish the continuation. And just to show the impact of configure wait, we can put the configure wait here and we can debug this code again. And we can see that we successfully hit this breakpoint. But as I said in the previous video, I'm going to cover configure wait best practices in the future episodes. But let's continue running this code. This is the last line of the main method, so the application should exit, but it didn't. What's going on? Let's hit the pause. And now let's look at main method again. We have using var here, so it means that we're disposing synchronization context right before exiting the main method. And we can see that indeed we're calling the dispose method. And the dispose method on our custom synchronization context waits for the thread to finish. So we call thread join and we got stuck. We have another example of a classical deadlock. As you can see, we're calling this dispose method from the synchronization context thread itself. And now we're waiting for that thread to be finished, but it's not possible. And why we have this problem? Because each stage of the async method is executed inside the synchronization context. And the last block of this method that calls synchronization context dispose method is called from the same synchronization context dedicated thread. How to fix this issue? There are a few ways to do that. First, we can avoid disposing the synchronization context. Another option is to detach the synchronization context by setting it to null. But it's not going to be enough. We need to await task yield to jump away from the current synchronization context. And now we can call this code again, and we can see that application exits. Let's switch to a parallel code instead of the async code. Let's say that we have process data in parallel method that gets a bunch of IDs to process them in parallel. The logic itself is not very important. I just want to show how the log contention is manifested in parallel stacks. Let's pause the execution and let's check parallel stacks. So we have the main thread, and it's interesting already that you can see that Parallel 4 uses the main thread for executing some data. And then we have another 11 threads that are doing something similar. So all of them are calling append method. And 10 of them are blocked on a lock, which is held by this thread. And now we can check this thread and we can see like, huh, okay, so this thread actually executes this sleep under the lock. And that causes all of the threads to be blocked waiting on the lock. This example shows how parallel stacks groups the threads together. And in complex scenario, it's very useful because in reality, you can have dozens, if not hundreds of threads being blocked or busy on some work. But one thing that I really love is that this window shows which thread holds the lock. And it was a life saver for many production scenarios for me. Let's look at another example. 
This one is probably one of my most favorite ones. So let's say that we have an asynchronous method that calls another async method, that calls another async method, that is returning a task based on task completion source. So if you faced this situation before, you know how hard it is to analyze such kind of issues. So let's look at the call stack. So let's ignore this waiting on async operation right now, because this was added when parallel stacks were added to Visual Studio. But before it was just a main method that got stuck and nothing else. We don't know why it's stuck. We don't know why it's got blocked. We don't have any other threads. And indeed, nothing is going on in this application because no activity is happening and we're just waiting for a task to be finished. Due to some bug, the task completion source set result or set error is never been called. And in this case, the whole chain of async method is got stuck. The way I was debugging this before, I was looking at memory layout. I was checking all the state machines. I was checking what the continuations are registered to them to figure out where the state machine is getting stuck and where potentially we forget to call set result on a task completion source. But right now you can just click on waiting on async operation, jump to tasks view, and then we can see that, huh, okay, we have a main method that calls process data async, that calls fetch data async, and now this fetch data async is never done. And we can see that, okay, we have try get data from cache that uses task completion source, and now we can see that task completion source was never completed. And that's why the whole chain is never finished. In this episode, I wanted to show how awesome Parallel Stacks is. I use it like every time when I'm dealing with either some issue with async code or with some hangs or deadlocks and whatnot. This is just a life-changing tool for me when I'm dealing with such kind of problems. Maybe I'm biased because I have to deal with async issues or threading issues a lot, but I feel that Parallel Stacks is one of the most underrated features of Visual Studio. If you want to understand your application better, I would highly recommend to pause the execution of your application or get a memory dump of the real application and look at parallel stacks. You probably will find a lot of interesting insights. If you like this episode, hit that like button, subscribe, and let me know in the comments below what that net topic you want me to cover next. That's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching, be curious, and see you next time.